please realize that the stall of I want to think it over will come to you in different packaging. Meaning it might not just be verbatim, I want to think it over. It can be things like, we don't jump into things like this. We always read everything and we'll call you next week. It could be, I can't do anything until we have a meeting to talk this over. See, what I want you to do as a pro with Card Service International, I want you to say to yourself, when I hear anything that's putting me off, I'm going to label it as a stall. Now, when I do this, say stall. I'm going to label it as a stall. I want to think it over as a stall. We're going to sleep on it. We'll get back to you as a stall. So now we've labeled it. Now, here's the reason that most people in our business are wiped out by this stall. You see, there's nothing to do with it. Now, when I do this, say ghost, that stall is almost like a ghost. See, it's a stall. And every consumer in the world has learned the easiest and nicest way to get rid of a person in our business is to warmly, nicely say, we want to think it over. And over 95% of the people in this business accept that, and they leave hoping they will call you back. We cannot do that at Card Service International. We must commit that when we hear, I want to think it over, we accept it as a... We know it's a, Ghost. but we're going to learn phraseology to make that Ghost. turn into a concrete, final area of concern that we will then overcome and close. Now, the wording is critical. And if I had any of the techniques I've taught you that I had the right, if Chuck allowed me, to lock you up in a room and say you will not come out until you can sit and at a table with me and a very natural conversational tone deliver verbatim this presentation I would love to do that I can't I'm just trying to share with you the amount of money this is worth to you see a lot of them really don't mean it when they say it they're saying that because they're busy their mind is thinking I don't know if I should do this they aren't gonna some of them give it any time and they can cool off if you leave your presentation is over so I want you to make a commitment to learning this phraseology. Now here we are, come with me now, here we are, we've done everything. And sure enough, old John says, okay Tom, this is impressive and I think I want to think it over. You always start by saying these two words, that's fine, and his name. That's fine, John. And obviously, you wouldn't take your time thinking this decision over unless you were seriously interested would you now you trust Tom you deliver it just like that with a lot of warmth because you've done a good job he will jump right in and agree oh no no we are very interested I'll tell you something else that can happen if you have two decision makers partners husband wife partners that one sentence can get the one that wants to go ahead to jump in and help you close the other one. So that first sentence is critical. After you deliver that, you then would say, I mean, John, after all the time we spent working towards this decision, I'm sure you're not telling me that to get rid of me. Now, gang, don't be afraid to say that. If you've done your job, you go, no, no, no you've, I, I, you've been very good. I mean, you came out here, you spent time. Then you warmly say, so then may I assume you'll give it very careful consideration. Now, make sure you get that head nodding when you say you'll give it very careful consideration. Believe me, he'll right now say, oh, yes, oh, yes, we will, we will, we will, oh, yes, yes, yes. Then I want you to wrinkle that face up a little bit because you're curious now. And you say, John, just to clarify my thinking, what is it about our services that you want to think over? Is it the quality of the service I'll render? Now, there's a very important point here. As you look down at the script in your workbook, you'll see a little parentheses right next to that first word over. You cannot pause when you get to the first word over. You cannot do this. Just to clarify my thinking, John, uh, what is it about our services you feel you want to think over? You cannot 
pause there. If you pause with that over, many of them will jump in and say, well, it's just everything. So I want you to slur through that first is it. Now let's do that again. Go back to just to clarify my thinking, okay? So let's watch it, ready? So John, just to clarify my thinking, what is it about my services that you want to think over? Is it the quality of the service I'll render? Well, if you've done a good job, what will he say to that question? No, which is an emotional what? Yes. Then say the next thing. Is it the capability of the equipment? No. Is it something maybe I've forgotten to cover? No. Now here's the one that I want you to warmly hold out. Seriously, John, please, level with me. Could your hesitation in any way be the financial considerations? Now when you say the words financial considerations, if he looks a little cloudy at you, a little dazed, like he doesn't know what you're talking about, and that can happen. See, a lot of people that you meet in a small business may not know what the term financial considerations is. So if he looks a little confused, just smile and say, in other words, is in any way the money a challenge for us here? Hoping he will say what? Yes, you know, Tom, it's just a little more than we thought we should really invest. I think that's it, isn't it, Mary? It's just a little much, too much money? I can appreciate that, John. In fact, level with me. About how much too much do you feel we're talking about here? Well, I would say probably, I don't know, maybe $15 a month. So our real challenge is not that you want to use Card Service International services. We've decided that's what we want to do. We're right now just talking about one thing and one thing only. And that's a $15 per month challenge. Is that right? Well, I guess it is. John, I think we ought to keep that in the proper perspective. Do you know if you look at it, what you're really talking about is about 50 cents a day. And you know, I noticed this machine filled with sodas. One of them, 75 cents. For less than one can of soda, you can increase your clientele, you can increase profitability. Come on, I wouldn't be so insistent if I didn't totally believe at this moment that what we are offering you is so good for you. And you are going to thank me in the years ahead. Please, don't let yourself say no or I want to think it over to something so critical to the increased profitability of your fine business. Now that makes sense, doesn't it? Oh, I want you to learn that presentation. You will love that presentation. Now, I also want to make a point here. How many agree we are creatures of habit at times? You that are new are going to develop habits. And one of the worst habits you can develop is when you start talking about money in a decision that you decide to give it away for less. You're going to develop a habit. See, what's amazing is there are people that get $49.50 every single time, where there's others that always get $39.50. It's almost a habit, like you feel like I've got to lower the investment to get the business, and that is not true. See, a pro has a tremendous value on what we offer, and they realize the benefits that the consumer is getting, so that they've almost taken like a personal challenge to not give it away. And I mean this, if the only way you're getting a lot of sales is by lowering the investment people pay, you can't honestly call yourself a true professional. So I so beg you, and I mean that, turn pro. Your services are worth what you're charging. Yes, there'll be people that have to have the lowest. There's always that person. But they deserve the best. They should invest in the best. And that 10 to $20 difference will be nothing compared to the long-term benefits. I hope you that are new will start a commitment that we only in very, very, very 
small, limited situation. 